All right. So uh, in this talk, I will address why we need mycasual CT perfusion and what the current experiences uh, are, and then finally draw some future perspectives. So why do we need mycasual CT perfusion? I guess you have seen this uh, slide, and you know these guidelines published by the European Society of uh, Cardiology on how to manage patients with stable coronary artery disease. It turns out to be quite complex and I will not go into small details, but the bottom line is that we need to calculate the pre-test probability of having coronary artery disease. And patients with intermediate pre-test probability between 15 and 85%, those are the patients that we want to do uh, non-invasive testing on. So at this stage, we can uh, do in this intermediate risk group, we can do stress testing by exercise testing or stress imaging but we can also do cardiac CT. However, cardiac CT is only indicated for patients with a probability bet uh, between 15 and 50%. So um, conventionally, at least in Denmark, but also in most European countries, we have used the exercise bicycle test or expect examinations. But then now we have the anatomical based alternative being cardiac CT. And I guess the invasive cardiologists kind of feared that with the introduction of this non-invasive anatomical-based test, then it would mean that we will have less invasive procedures to do. However, this was not how it went. Uh, and this is some data from the uh, Danish registry where we can see from 2008 to 2011, we saw this dramatically increase in the use of cardiac CT. But uh, the invasive coronary angiography was not reduced. It was actually also slightly uh, increased in this period of time. So they should be happy, I guess. Uh, so we performed a study, a randomized study, called the CATS trial uh, in 600 patients with chest pain, but with normal ECG and normal coronary arteries. And we randomized uh, these patients into uh, either cardiac CT guided uh, strategy or standard care with either exercise bicycle test or SPECT. And then we uh, evaluated how these two different strategies would influence the referral rate for invasive coronary angiography and also uh, how they were able to uh, detect uh, significant coronary artery stenosis and a uh, need of revascularizations. So, uh, as expected, uh, actually, in the CT-guided group, we saw that more patients were referred for invasive coronary angiography. However, it was not uh, significant in this uh, study. However, uh, more patients in the CT-guided group of the populations were identified with a significant stenosis, and the stenosis was confirmed by ICA in 12% of the population with CT compared to only 4% uh, with standard care, and that was significant. And also more patients ended up with uh, revascularizations in the CT-guided uh, group. So among the patients that were referred for invasive coronary angiography, the positive predictive value was 71% uh, for CT compared to 36% for standard care. So it turns out that it might be a good idea to have anatomical information in these patients. However, we would like this number to be 100% and not 71%. So, so why is it not 100%? Well, this is, of course, as we have heard, that there are some challenges to cardiac CT, and among this, calcification, and in this case, it's difficult to assess the degree of luminal stenosis due to calcifications. However, it is crucial for this patient uh, due to the location. Also, patients with borderline stenosis, well, it's difficult to assess whether this is hemodynamically significant or not. And finally, stents can be a problem. I guess in many cases we are able to see whether the stents are patent or not, but uh, also in many cases it will be uh, uh, difficult to uh, say. So that's why we kind of need a functional information in many cases. And in this case we see that in the LAD we have two stenosis. It's difficult to say to what degree they compromise the coronary blood flow, but then when we look at the myocardium at rest, we see first here that uh, the myocardium is quite homogeneous. There are no uh, real perfusion defects. But when we uh, stress with adenosine, we see that uh, now we can see this huge perfusion defect in the, in the anterior wall and in the septum. 
Also, this patient had a left dominant system, which is also why the perfusion defect is uh, very big. So, um, the scan protocol that we use at this hospital in Copenhagen is that, of course, uh, patient preparation is crucial. They should be abstinent from uh, coffee at least 18 hours before the scan. We give them beta blockers if the heart rate is uh, above 60, and then they need two IV axes. We do the scout image and the calcium score, and then we perform the CTA study as normal uh, with a prospective ECG timing. And then we wait uh, 10 minutes for the washout of contrast, and then we stress, uh, stress with adenosine for four or five minutes, and then we perform the stress scan, uh, which is similar to the, to the rest scan. So uh, these are the results of one small study in 39 patients that underwent invasive coronary angiography. Um, and we saw that when we compared uh, uh, the combined strategy of CTA plus CT perfusion, then the uh, positive predictive value increased on a per patient level and per vessel level, although it was not significant on per patient level due to the low number of patients. However, the uh, area on the curve, the diagnostic accuracy increased in uh, both per patient and per vessel analysis. So it seems like uh, there's a future for CT perfusion and many studies have actually been published uh, on this matter, uh, but most of them have been smaller uh, pilot studies. Well, I guess even more studies here. And then uh, finally, we have now the call uh, 320 that was published. And uh, this is a multi center study uh, performed in uh, many hospitals uh, over the world, and also Res uh, Hospital was in, involved. And it was published in the European Heart Journal uh, this year. And this uh, study in uh, 381 patients uh, compared the um, combination of CTA stenosis more than 50% plus uh, perfusion defect. Uh, and it was held against uh, the gold reference, what, which uh, was uh, more than 50% stenosis on invasive coronary angiography combined with a perfusion defect on SPECT. So what they found, this is kind of the main result, that uh, the area on the curve increased from uh, 0.82 with CTA alone to 0.87 with the combined CTA plus CTP. Okay, so what makes uh, CT perfusion special? Well, um, the uh, myocardial attenuation density um, in one single static cardiac CT volume uh, has previously been compared uh, with um, a microsphere uh, derived absolute myocardial blood flow and shown a nice correlation there. And also due to the um, uh, excellent spatial resolution of cardiac CT, it's possible to calculate a uh, transmural perfusion gradient across the myocardium, which could be clinically relevant because we know that the subendocardium is more uh, prone to develop ischemia. Um, so we can get some semi-quantitative measures from a uh, cardiac CT perfusion. And uh, just to uh, show you, this is what we know from uh, previous uh, experimental animal studies that uh, compare the coronary stenosis severity and the coronary blood flow. And this uh, study by Gold, which is very famous, of course, shown that uh, during exercise, uh, the coronary blood flow um, decreases in the presence of more than 50% seclusions. However, at rest, uh, the coronary blood flow is quite uh, uh, constant until very high degrees of stenosis. So, um, it has been difficult to uh, reproduce these uh, uh, results in, the, in the humans, uh, but now we have cardiac CT and the possibility to have both anatomy and uh, function in the same test. So, we did a, a, a study in 200 patients that were hospitalized for chest pain with normal ECG and normal troponins, and they were referred for outpatient clinic uh, cardiac CT. And again, we used prospective ECG triggering and rest first, then stress protocol uh, with adenosine. So uh, the CT angiography was analyzed according to established guidelines, and uh, each coronary vessel was uh, scored according to these uh, uh, gradings. And then uh, for the further analysis, each uh, patient was uh, represented by the coronary vessel with the most severe coronary stenosis, and then compared to the corresponding myocardial territory. 
So uh, to get these semi-quantitative measures, um, the left ventricular myocardium was uh, divided automatically into 16 segments, and then we could calculate the perfusion index to uh, find as uh, the mean attenuation density in one segment divided by the mean attenuation density in the left ventricular lumen, and we did that on the rest images and on the stress images, and then we could calculate the myocardial perfusion reserve defined as stress perfusion uh, index divided by rest perfusion index. Then we could also calculate the transmural perfusion ratio, the TPR, defined as the subendocardial layer divided by the uh, subepicardial layer. So, this is what, was, uh, what we found, that the perfusion index at rest was quite constant uh, despite increasing degrees of stenosis, whereas during adenosine stress we saw that the perfusion index declined with increasing degrees of stenosis. Also, uh, the same pattern was seen for the myocardial perfusion reserve. For the transmural perfusion ratio, the TPR, we saw that at rest, uh, the TPR was quite constant, uh, despite, uh, although uh, patients with uh, total occlusions had significantly lower TPR values. Uh, during adenosine stress, we saw that the TPR was uh, constant until a threshold of 50% stenosis from where the TPR declined even further. So we also did in a subset of patients, we compared with invasive uh, QCA and we uh, saw the same pattern. So to draw some future perspectives, we would like to have and work on to improve the image quality. We would like to reduce the radiation. Uh, we need some randomized controlled trials uh, to see how uh, CT perfusion actually performs. And then uh, at some point it would be uh, interesting to implement CT perfusion in the guidelines. So improvement of image quality. Um, in example A, we see a typical example of cardiac motion, which is shown as these black spots uh, that can uh, uh, be streaks or spots. And it can mimic, in some cases, a real uh, myocardial perfusion defects. In example B, we see a clear example of very uh, poor motion artifacts, and it's not possible to uh, uh, say anything here. And this is due to uh, that the patient actually uh, took a breath during image acquisition, as, and this can be identified here in example E as a double contour of the diaphragm. Then in example C and D, we see examples of uh, beam hardening artifacts due to the close relationship to uh, very dense uh, structures. And finally, uh, the cone beam artifact due to the white detectors of the newer generation scanners. So, uh, in 251 patients, we uh, uh, noted that uh, cardiac motion was by far the most uh, typical type of artifact in 40% of the patients uh, during the adenosine stress. And also, the cone beam artifact, we saw that. Uh, however, beam hardening artifact was actually uh, very uh, rarely uh, seen. So, the radiation dose in the same 250 patients, we saw that uh, the median dose of radiation was at rest 3.2 and during adenosine stress uh, a little higher due to the uh, uh, higher heart rate. Um, so in total around 10 millisievert, which is comparable to a uh, SPECT. And this was uh, without iterative reconstruction algorithm, so we believe that in the future it could be uh, further decreased. So we need some randomized controlled trials, and therefore we have uh, initiated the CATS2 trial. And in this trial, we compare in a randomized setting uh, patients with chest pain, and we compare them with the, they're randomized to CTA uh, or to combined CTA plus CTP. And the primary outcome is the frequency of uh, coronary revascularizations uh, with FFR uh, measured among the patients that undergo uh, invasive investigation. So, so these are the back to the guidelines here. It's, we know that cardiac CT at the moment so is only indicated for patients with uh, uh, probability of 15 to 50 percent, uh, whereas in comparison the exercise uh, uh, test is, uh, goes up to 65 percent and the SPECT examination is indicated for the entire intermediate range. With CT perfusion, when the evidence is there, we believe that uh, we could expand the, uh, the range and the indication range for cardiac CT. So, uh, and the clinical way to go should be this uh, approach. 
where you would have the norm, uh, the cardiac CTA, and if it's normal, then you can rule out coronary artery disease and send the patient uh, home. But if you see anything, uh, if it's abnormal or if it's inconclusive due to a calcification stent and so on, then you will go on to uh, the stress CT perfusion. And this is just one final case. I would like to give a, a, a point here that this is a case that when I read it, I found it normal. And so have uh, like 95% of uh, the doctors I have presented it to. Uh, and so should this patient go to invasive coronary angiography? No, not in this case. But this is only the rest images, and it's important also to look at the rest images, because when we do that, we see that there's a perfusion defect in the anterior wall, here and here, and also the TPR polar map shows that there's something there. Then when we do the overlaying of the TPR plot with the anatomy, we see that there should be something going off here. And when we go back to the images, we see that, oh, there's in fact uh, one occluded uh, first diagonal. So this is, you don't need to stress the patient in this case. Uh, if you have a, a, one occluded artery, you should uh, definitely also look at the myocardium. And it could be a small branch of a, uh, a diagonal or something like that. So my conclusions are that anatomical and functional information is needed for optimal diagnostic evaluation of patients with suspected CAD. Myocardial CT perfusion offers the uh, incremental diagnostic value to CT angiography alone, although we want some randomized control trials. And the additional CT perfusion may in the future expand uh, the indication of cardiac CT, and finally, the transmural myocardial perfusion ratio, the TPR, is a potential strong functional index of coronary artery stenosis severity. Thank you.